inauguration of New Hampshire's 65th governor, Major Francis P. Murphy of Nashua, who has now just begun to deliver his inaugural address. From Representatives Hall at the State Capitol in Concord, New Hampshire, comes the ceremony of the inauguration of the 65th governor of New Hampshire, Major Francis Parnell Murphy of Nashua, New Hampshire. Governor Murphy took the oath of office a few moments ago and is now engaged in presenting his inaugural message. We transfer you at this time to the speaker's platform. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just listened to the inaugural address presented by Major Francis P. Murphy, Governor of New Hampshire. This ceremony has taken place before a joint meeting of the 122nd New Hampshire Legislature, which met for the first time yesterday. Representatives Hall has been crowded today with members of the General Court, representatives of state departments, and friends of the new governor, who were here to listen to his inaugural message. Because of the limited capacity of this hall, general invitations to the inauguration were not issued. And for that reason, we are glad to have been able to present to the radio audience an audible report of this event. The inauguration of Governor Murphy has been accompanied with the ceremonial formalities that always accompany such an event. The new governor was assorted to the State House by officers of the New Hampshire National Guard, and members of the legislature accompanied him from the council chamber to this auditorium. The oath of office, just before we went on the air at 12.15, was administered by the new president of the Senate, Dr. Anson C. Alexander of Boscoan. First, we heard the invocation given by the Right Reverend John T. Dallas, D.D., Bishop of the Episcopal Church. At the conclusion of the ceremony, as you heard, the benediction was given by the Most Reverend John B. Peterson, Roman Catholic Bishop of the Diocese of Manchester. Both Bishop Dallas and Bishop Peterson are close personal friends of Governor Murphy. Upon taking his oath, the governor proceeded at once to deliver his inaugural message. At its conclusion, Governor Bridges proceeded to the executive offices with his counselors. There, the five new members are about to be sworn in. These men are Charles M. Dale of Portsmouth, Virgil D. White of Ossipi, Thomas A. Murray of Manchester, Alvin A. Lucia of Nashua, and George H. Rolfe of Concord. At the conclusion of the ceremony, 35 officers of the National Guard will escort the legislators and guests to the receiving line where they will meet the new heads of the administration. When this program is completed, the legislature will adjourn for the week, returning on Tuesday next to begin the work of filing bills and the transaction of other business. Membership of permanent committees will be announced by the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate, after which this New Hampshire legislature of 1937 will get down to business in the usual way. This concludes our part in the inauguration ceremonies which have originated at Representatives Hall of the State Capitol in Concord, New Hampshire. We return you now to our main studios. <laughs>